Hello and welcome to the Early Edition. I'm Sebi Motamidi. And I'm Simon Crownshaw. And we've got two wonderful guests here today, Jackie from Premiere Pro and Diane from DataZoom. And we're going to be spending the next 10 or 15 minutes talking about the future of media and entertainment, Sepi. It's going to be really exciting. So many changes, so many updates with technology and data and artificial intelligence and virtual production. It's going to be really exciting. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. In our previous two episodes, we talked about AI, we talked about virtual production, we really talked about some of the technologies that are being used today within the media and entertainment industry and are really transforming that industry. I want to shift our focus to the future and to speak to what your perspectives on, on let's start with artificial intelligence and where that's going to take our industry to next. Jackie, perhaps we'll start with you. Sure. Um, I think with AI or gender AI, there's always this um, fear with new technology that it will eliminate you know, jobs for humans, right? Mm -hmm. But I think we should always look at technology as tools and they are things that we need to learn anew to create kind of a new paradigm and it create new industries, right? So for example, when I was shooting you know, in Vietnam, instead of actually flying there, I can actually just be there, right? And I can do Thailand, all of Southeast Asia in the day. And I think that is kind of empowering, it's awesome. You, your, your creativity isn't limited by, your technology is actually expanded. And with generative AI, you have not only locations, you have language models, you have a bunch of data models that you can use for just the creatives, and I, I'm very excited by it. Um, when I look to the future and I think about uh, how data and um, machine learning and things like that play into artificial intelligence, I think what's exciting is the opportunity to build more efficiency and profitability into this space. We need data to understand how our business is performing. We need data to be able to act faster and build in optimizations, and I am excited by that. Yeah, one of the things we've been hearing about CEPI, right, is the ability to transform workflows to some degree. What does that look like in the future? So I think we all need to understand, right, that they're very complex today in our, in our space, right? They could be a lot easier. Maybe just talk a little bit about what you see as the future for workflows. Maybe that's broadcast, maybe that's studios, maybe it's even content creation all up. Just love yeah. to get your sense on what does what the future of workflows look like? Well, I mean, I think when it comes to production, pre-production and post-production, one of the things that we like in an industry is to eliminate inefficiencies, right? So with, if we can use AI, for example, to kind of, in pre-production, scope out where we actually want to shoot, what we want to do, potentially even what the staffing looks like, we can, we can actually hire folks that are catered to the technology and not necessarily hiring people from the exact locations. And then in post, it's almost like instead of having five different kind of takes, we have, okay, well, let's see how it looks like in this certain location in Egypt or in South Africa. And I think what we're talking about is there's like 85% of all productions and post productions almost share something very similar, right? So what we want to do is use technology to eliminate all the inefficiencies. And I think if you, you break down everything, you'll be able to pick out from each segment like what you can do um, so you can basically streamline what you would have a human do as meticulous. All the meticulous activities, I think, definitely needs to be eliminated so we can actually focus just on the creativity. Yeah, the quality would just go up, right? Yeah. Exactly. Diane, what do you think? When I think about workflows, I think about that end-to-end -end workflow and the delivery and the experience that users receive. And I think that there's a lot that we can be doing to improve the delivery pathways. Um, using data and better understanding, you know, connectivity and the ability to deliver a video to an end user in a specific place on a specific type of device. Um, I also think that for the business of um, streaming, we can do a better job uh, using data to inform advertising and using that data to ensure that we are maximizing profitability or ensuring that all our ad fill rates are, you know, as high as possible, that we can provide this best reporting to advertisers so they can uh, understand the outcomes that come out of their ad spend that supports this business. I think there was a study that come out, came out that says that almost all major streaming services will have an ad supported option by the end of this year. So I think when I think about optimizations across that workflow, it's really also on the business side as well. Yeah, the business impact is huge, Sefi, right? In terms of, and I think Diane, you're exactly right. I think it's almost like a forgotten piece sometimes. We talk about monetization, but it's really a driving force for revenue, right, in terms of what supports all the productions that we've been talking about, right? They really need to be there. So using data and other things differently is a key factor. Yeah. Would you agree? I totally agree. And I would say that um, from the data and monetization perspective, I think we're still uh, just uh, scratching, the, scratching surface the surface of that. Yeah. I think that if you look at more mature um, monetization strategies from you know digital media, we see CPM rates that are so much higher, which is so ironic because video, for example, is so much more impactful way to deliver a message. But 
we still struggle to provide the same level of reporting and um, understanding of the impact of that video. So I'm excited to see how data can continue to connect the publisher advertiser ecosystem. Fantastic. Wonderful. One of the topics that we've been talking about throughout all of our episodes is the environmental sustainability element of our industry. Some of the practices that we're adopting in order to take us to the future. What, um, what did the two of you see? I'm curious about your perspectives on environmental sustainability and the future of media and entertainment. My personal perspective is that we, um, you know, we, we deliver a lot of content. We should be uh, cognizant of making sure that the end device that's receiving that content um, isn't receiving, for example, bit rates that are much too high than <laughs> what the device should actually be able to present to the end user. And also similarly that the end user can experience a difference with uh, up level of quality. So when I think about you know, the greening of streaming, it's around some of those uh, understandings of where some of those thresholds are and optimizing around that. Touching on a point I made earlier about like our own carbon footprint, right? Um, I don't know if you guys have been to Egypt or the Pyramid of Giza, but, but the Pyramid of Giza are basically right now, you know, the sand's falling off and because we are doing a lot of light shows and a lot of like real life productions there, right? And I think in general, it's smart to understand in which, if we're talking about just production, about where we can optimize, where we don't have to be there physically. If we're not actually doing anything with the pyramids, why can't that be virtual, right? Now, when it comes to pre-production and it comes to all the planning, I think what we need to consider is how do we eliminate like the, the amount of time it takes from concept to production to post and then to delivery. And I think that if we shrink that time down, we can, like I was saying earlier, pick out the points where you can, well, this doesn't actually need to be present. We don't actually need to drive our cars or fly our planes or send people there because all that stuff costs um, environmentally, right? It's not just about people time, it's about the plane, the gas, everything. So I think when we know that we don't need to be there, we probably should opt out, you know? Yeah, I think um, you raised some really good points. I think um, when Seppi and I have been kind of having discussions, right, it's been about GPUs, compute, cloud, AI, but fundamentally for our industry, right, one of the key challenges has been adoption, right, of those workflows. Maybe just talk a little bit about your perspectives on changing those workflows and getting people to adopt them. Yeah, change is hard. Change is hard. <laughs> Especially for, like, professionals, broadcasts, and, you know, I've been through this, right? I was telling to somebody earlier that I remember cutting from film to analog to digital, and every time we do this change, they're always, someone's screaming, like, no, we can't do this, you know? But I think there's a beauty to it, right? Like, I remember tele-seeing my film, digitizing, that takes forever, right? Like for me to get a shot into the editing room. Now it's like C2C, I hit record, I can be in a room and I can see the shot that, that takes place, right? And I think that that's one thing that we need to empower like users, like change is scary, it's hard, but it's to empower our creativity. Like the more time we get to spend on, on creation, that's exciting, like we shouldn't be afraid of it. It is a little bit scary, but change is good, scary is good. <laughs> Um, when I think about uh, things that we can do to make uh, this industry more efficient, I think about data and all the cloud computing resources and the uh, data centers and their cooling and power that they uh, use. And so I think being able to understand, you know, have a better understanding of what data we need to be gathering, making sure that it's optimized to the level of granularity and the speed that matches with the fit and the use case behind what we're trying to measure or trying to optimize, um, I think that we could uh, do a better job with some of our cloud computing resources in that manner. Some more real time, more granular is what I'm hearing from. Is that, is that fair? I think for the most part, I think that data is the exhaust of a lot of other more expensive processes. So if you spend more on data, then you can probably find and cover savings in many other areas of the business as well. And that's very exciting though, because if you talk about data and how you transfer information, you know, we used to send hard drives, right? Like that's the one thing about technology, we don't have to do them more, collaboration. You can be in, I don't know, Dubai, and I can be in San Francisco and we edit at the same time. I'm mean, granted to be midnight yeah. where you are, but you know, and that, that's exciting. And I think that's something that um, we didn't grow up with as kids, right? Like as kids, we're like, oh, we wish I could do this. And now as adults, I'm like, I wish I was a child because all this technology, you know, and then you don't have to change. You're like, this is my technology, right? So I think as long as we're excited about, and as industry leaders, we need to be excited about new technology. So that's like, we're basically the evangelists of, you know, our main users. And I think that data can be a demonstration of the effectiveness of that change. Yeah. So. Wonderful. What a great note to end on. 
Yeah, you sound excited, Seppi, right? I'm so excited for the future of the industry. Yeah, I think there's a lot of evolving technology that's going to lead us down a really great path, right? That's right. That's right. Well, I want to thank both of our guests for joining us today on the Early Edition. That's right. And so from Microsoft and NVIDIA, it's been great to be part of the Early Edition with you, Seppi. And you, Simon. And we'll see you all again soon. Thank you for joining us.